Good day. So in this section um, of the NX Motion application uh, presentations, uh, I'll just uh, quickly run through some of the post-processing techniques that we can use in order to get valuable information from our simulation. I will be using this this 2D model as in uh, one of the previous video videos, and we can see again it's this it's this model that has. Uh, a joint right there that connects this link to ground and then also uh, a joint that create that add, attaches these two links at that section so I already did a simulation uh, so I'll just quickly show that is the that is what we've got at this point so there's a driver on that joint there and then the other joint is uh, the other link is free to move okay so I'll just stop this and now what we can do is we can start plotting uh, some of our some of our dimensions so we can see uh, in this case uh, we can look at part one and the important thing is as you highlight um, these different uh, components in, in in this in these drop downs you can see that with the XY result view tab that is open we can see that as I select different values are uh, sorry different components we can see that the options at the bottom changes okay so another thing that you can also maybe see is um, if I select part one I can see that there's a blue that these uh, names uh, turn to blue which means they are the children or they are dependent on part one and if I do vice versa you can see that the everything above this turns red okay so this means that again this is dependent on what happens to these links okay so just looking at uh, our XY result view we can see there's displacement velocity and acceleration so uh, let's go for part one and we can just say give me the magnitude velocity and I can plot that so that it would be at the center center of gravity and you can see that is the that is the velocity that we see in millimeters per second and this would make sense because this is a, a motion that is imposed onto that body but what we can also now do is we can go and select po point two and we can also select velocity and we can again go magnitude overlay into this plot so you can see it's a little bit out of range so we can just quickly edit our range in the toolbar so I went here into editing and then I can just double click this axis and we go to the range tab here and I'm just going to bump this up I'm just going to take auto range off so we can see we have we can start at zero that would be fine and then we're going up to maybe let's let's try 500 and we can apply and we see oh this this pot bottom one is moving a bit faster than we anticipated so I can just bump that up like that and there you can see uh, the, the blue would be to indicate the magnitude velocity for part two and the red would indicate the magnitude velocity for part one um, and uh, another option that we can maybe just probe this uh, uh, this graph and I can go into probing mode and as and I can slide along this um, Along these axes and you can see at the top there it, it gives us values for both of the axes and if you click you get the values so clicking closer to the top graph will put a put a, a datum point there and I can just drag that around if I really want to um, and clicking close to the bottom uh, to the red line I can also drag that around just to get some values off of that okay so that would conclude this section on uh, some of the post-processing techniques. Um, it's quite intuitive uh, in terms of what you can see at the bottom here in X, Y, y result view. These, these are always calculated for you. If you want to create any different uh, points, uh, that could be, uh, you can maybe use the, the marker options. So you can create a marker on a link. So maybe we can maybe quickly do that. And we can select that. We want a marker on that link. And we can go and specify a point with our point dialog box. And we can say, 
yeah, let's put a point on face and I'll just move it somewhere there, somewhere arbitrary. And we can see that it uses the, uh, which uh, coordinate system it should use. It should use the absolute coordinate system or the s a similar coordinate system to that. So you can see the X and Z and Y axes are similar. And we can say, okay, so now we've got, you can see there's a little marker right there. And now we can have, we can add, attach a sensor as well to this. So if I select this marker, um, you, so if you use a marker to, to attach a sensor to, um, you, it, it's only for your geometrical and, um, and movement that it can measure, measure. So the fact that force is selected won't allow me to select that marker. So if I go to displacement maybe, now I'll be able to select this marker. And we can ask for which component. So let's just go uh, linear magnitude. Um, that's linear magnitude motion. And I can select OK. So this, uh, this shows that a sensor has been created. If I select it, I can see that the sensor is, sensor is created on that coordinate system or that little marker that I created there. And now I can just quickly solve this because this will not have any values in it yet. I'll just have to resolve this, this model quickly. Uh, there it's done. And now I can select on the sensor and you can see that it allows me to again plot, plot this. So I can just quickly plot that model on a new window. And we can see that is... This is what happens to this, to this model, um, or to that specific marker in terms of the displacement it undergoes throughout the motion. Okay, thank you.